In this video, I will discuss the synthesis and secretion of vitamin D from its non-functional pre-hormones all the way to the functional hormone called calcitriol. First, let's start with the pre-hormone called 25-hydroxyvitamin D. There are two ways the body can get 25-hydroxyvitamin D. One is from the diet, typically from either fish or dairy, or from supplements, and these are called ergocalciferol or vitamin D2. The other way the body can get 25-hydroxyvitamin D is from cholecalciferol, or vitamin D3, which is synthesized in the skin in the presence of ultraviolet light. Interesting historical footnote was what occurred during the Industrial Age in Europe when the extensive smog covered the sun and there was no vitamin D2 supplementation in the diet. This led to a disease called rickets. After viewing the videos on calcium and bone metabolism, you should be able to predict what was happening to the children in Europe during this time. Back to the synthesis of calcitriol. Both vitamin D2 and D3 are equally converted to the previously mentioned pre-hormone 25-hydroxyvitamin D in the liver via the enzyme 25-hydroxylase. The final step in the pathway is when 25-hydroxyvitamin D is converted to the active hormone 125-dihydroxyvitamin D, also called calcitriol. I may use these words interchangeably, but they have the same meaning. This step is performed under the influence of the enzyme 1-alpha-hydroxylase, a conversion occurring predominantly in the proximal nephron of the kidney. 1-alpha-hydroxylase does exist throughout the body. Therefore, calcitriol can also be synthesized extrarenally, including inactivated macrophages and thymic-derived lymphocytes, an effect that may be important in conditions with an increase in macrophage activity such as in granulomatous diseases, such as active pulmonary sarcoidosis and tuberculosis, and in lymphoma. Through a number of different mechanisms further discussed in the video on calcium and phosphorus metabolism, calcitriol then acts to increase the plasma calcium through effects on the gastrointestinal tract, bone, and the kidney. Now you can imagine how, in granulomatous diseases and in lymphoma, Overproduction of calcitriol will lead to increased intestinal calcium absorption and ultimately to hypercalcemia and hypercalciuria. There are numerous built-in physiologic feedback mechanisms to help stabilize this process and to prevent overproduction of calcitriol, subsequently preventing hypercalcemia and hyperphosphatemia. I will go through a few of these here. First, there is an alternate inactivating pathway that vitamin D can undergo when 24-alpha-hydroxylase converts 25-hydroxyvitamin D into the inactive 24-25-dihydroxyvitamin D. Calcitriol negatively inhibits 1-alpha-hydroxylase. Calcitriol also negatively feeds back on the parathyroid gland to decrease production of parathyroid hormone, which leads to a reduction in renal calcium reabsorption and also reduces further activation of calcitriol because increased levels of PTH stimulate 1-alpha-hydroxylase. Additionally, a reduction in PTH increases the activity of the inactivating enzyme 24-alpha-hydroxylase. Also recall that elevated calcium will itself reduce PTH secretion, but an excessive fall in the plasma calcium is prevented by an increase in parathyroid hormone, which increases 1-alpha-hydroxylase activity. Low phosphorus also stimulates 1-alpha-hydroxylase, while high phosphorus inhibits the enzyme 1-alpha-hydroxylase. The last hormone to be mentioned is fibroblast growth factor 23, which inhibits 1-alpha-hydroxylase and increases activity of 24-alpha-hydroxylase, both of which will further decrease production of calcitriol and, along with the impact on renal phosphorus handling, lead to a decrease in phosphorus. I know this is all very confusing. I don't expect you to grasp all of this immediately. However, I encourage you to continue reviewing these feedback processes and hormonal functions. Eventually, you will begin to understand the biochemical and functional manifestations that occur in diseases when there are alterations in these hormones.